Our service of Holy Eucharist, right, too, begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Revelation to John. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the, all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom and thanksgiving, and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the, of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and our God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10 and verse 22. We'll read it responsibly by half verse, breaking at the asterisk. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will glory in the Lord. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your face be ashamed. I called to my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my trouble. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. 
Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will not be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Happy All Saints Day. I hope you uh, celebrated well. The, yesterday, of course, was Halloween or All Hallows' Eve, the evening of All Saints Day. Um, it is perhaps one of the ironies of this day that the one of the greatest, highest holy days uh, in all the church calendar 
where we celebrate some of the greatest heroes of the saints it happens right you know less than 24 hours after halloween the day when our culture celebrates all of the death and evil that it possibly can <laughs> this sunday is in fact full of irony and for those english majors out there i'm aware the word irony is often misused <laughs> Merriam-Webster's dictionary notes that the definition of irony is contested and the persistent misuse of the term has widened its definition. But in all its definitions, irony includes an unexpected reversal. So I repeat that this Sunday is full of irony for us. It is full of unexpected reversals, outcomes and results that may be different than expected. For instance, today we celebrate the saints of God, those who through faith and suffering have become special heroes for the church. And though all of us would probably claim that that definition does not quite include us, yet the outcome of our praise of these saints is a call that each one of us can follow. And today we also celebrate All Souls Day. We're actually one day in advance on All Souls Day. Now, all Souls happens on November 2nd in the church calendar, and that's the day we celebrate all the faithful departed, in whose number we definitely will be included someday, if God keeps us faithful. So there are the heroes of the faith for all saints, and then those who barely squeak by into heaven for all souls, and then all manner of people in between, of which we count ourselves. And together, these two celebrations point us to our high calling in Christ Jesus, to love him with all of our heart and our soul and our strength and our mind, to love our neighbor as ourselves, to persevere in our faith through suffering and persecution, to hold fast to the good news that was proclaimed to us until either we die and enter the eternal rest or Christ comes back and consummates our hope. Because it is the love of this same Father that called each one of us out of the world into his marvelous light, and the same Christ who died for each of us heroes and barely squeak by people, <laughs> the same spirit dwelling in us that makes each one of us holy. But there are other ironies to this day. There is, in case you hadn't noticed, an election coming up. That's true irony, by the way, if you're English majors, right? It's not a stretch to say that the entire globe is focused on America's very near future. People from all over the world want to know what will happen right here in this very building, just a few hours from now, and in other polling places across the country. Plus, however many months it may take to get the whole thing sorted out afterwards, may God save us from division and doubt. But with this sharp focus on the near future, today Christians gather across the world to proclaim a different reality one which we access by remembering the past. We call to mind the saints who lived in previous ages, who persevered through harder labors than ours, more significant crises than ours, worse plagues than ours, deeper division than ours, tougher circumstances than ours. For the rest of the world, looking at the past only deepens our divisions, but for us Christians, looking at the past deepens our faith our trust in God, our peace which passes understanding. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, says the scripture. He has been faithful, he is faithful, and he will be faithful. But the ironies of this Sunday just keep coming. I mean, we're full of them today. Now, another one is the contrast between the, the world's way of making a difference and, and Christ's way of making a difference as we see in the gospel reading. In this political season, all sides seem to be trying to mobilize support. And how do we do that? Well, we're told that we need to change the world, and we've got to change the world right now. It's said that if we don't do the right thing at the ballot box, the sky will fall. We must solve the world's problems immediately, and we must become activists right now, and we must fill our yards with signs, while our, our neighbor must not fill their yard with the opponent's signs. <laughs> we, we must sever our relationships with anyone who doesn't agree, sacrifice for the cause, or it may be too late. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way about all this. I'm starting to feel that way about all this. 
These kinds of tactics are the way the world likes to mobilize a, a total commitment of its followers. And you'd think that Jesus, as he's starting out the Sermon on the Mount, he's about to really galvanize his own followers, you'd think he'd want to use the same tactics. So hear the irony in Jesus' words from the Sermon on the Mount in our Gospel reading. He is asking for a total commitment, don't, don't get me wrong, but, but he doesn't use guilt. He doesn't drum up a sense of urgency or militancy by pitting us against opponents. He doesn't try to radicalize us with ever more consequential fears. He doesn't even use robocalls or rallies or debates, and he doesn't have a website and he's got no internet advertising. <laughs> Perhaps Jesus is the worst political campaigner of all time. But look what he does instead. He holds out blessing to us. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the meek. He incentivizes us. He holds out a road of reward after reward from glory to glory, leading us onward to that which we love. As we love him more and more each step of the way, Jesus' path is not a path of fear but of love. And the more we love him, the further we're drawn along the path. Is this total commitment? Yes, eventually. In the end, it will surely cost us all. But by that time, we will have the eyes to see that we do but give up a paltry and insignificant thing to attain something far more beautiful and everlasting. But Jesus is also patient. For him, little steps suffice to begin. The path Jesus describes is accessible to each one of us. Think about it. To each one of us from where we are right now today, November 1st, 2020, each one of us is capable of attaining the blessings that Jesus offers in these Beatitudes. This is, in fact, the one way to make a difference in the world. We may win or lose at politics. We may or may not save the world. But one act only has ever made a difference for all eternity, and that is Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And the blessing that comes to us through that one act of love has the potential to grow and grow and grow eternally. It's Christ crucified who saves the world. Christ crucified rules the blessed kingdom. Christ crucified ends corruption and injustice. Christ crucified gives, forgives sin and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Christ crucified turns thieves into saints. Christ crucified brings all earthly and spiritual principalities and powers to their knees to proclaim him King of kings and Lord of lords. Christ crucified will end all violence and fraud and error and pride and oppression. And Christ crucified can lead each one of us on our way, step by step, decision by decision, day by day, on the path that leads to the glorious gathering of the saints in light. And this is perhaps the greatest irony of this day, the irony of the gospel that a public execution can change weak, fallible, corrupt human beings into the glorious host of heaven. The process is not a mystery. Jesus lays it out for us clearly. It's a path full of irony. Blessings come to the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If we believed that and practiced it, would we still try to make more and more money? We might not be afraid of being poor. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. If we believed that, would we be so afraid of the pain of grief and loss? We might willingly embrace it in the hope of eternal comfort. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. If we believed that, would we not cheerfully relinquish power and control rather than try to gather as much of it as we can? Would we not accept what God brings? Humility would define us. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. If we believed that, would it really be so hard to make time to pray every day? 
A right relationship with God would become our number one priority. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. If we really believed that, would we not change the way we think about our opponents? Whether it's in politics or personal relationships or any in the workplace, at home, wherever. We would prioritize grace and forgiveness. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. If we believed that, would we not take extra effort to keep our hearts clear of the love of money, the lust of the eyes, and of the desire for any sinful thing? We would develop a love for moral purity. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. If we believed that, would we jump so readily right into the world's conflicts? We would count it a victory, not to overcome our opponents, but to overcome the very impulse to hate and fight. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If we believed that, would we ever fear the consequences of doing right? We would count it as a success if we had protesters outside our church door every Sunday, as long as we were doing what was right in God's eyes. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on Christ's account. If we believed that, would we not rejoice and be glad at such treatment because our reward is great in heaven? There our company will be with the prophets and the saints who were treated the same way in their day. This is the process of saint making. It looks just like these beatitudes. It's a process full of irony in the sense of unexpected and results, uh, radical reversals from what we normally would say. The normal ways of living and posturing and navigating our sinful world, it turns out, lead us only to loss but the path of Christ crucified. Yes, it leads to the cross, but beyond the cross, it leads, ironically, to blessedness forever. And despite our sins and failings, Christ promises to shepherd us along this path until we reach the blessedness that he promises. One more irony of this day, if you will permit me. We meet today during a pandemic that keeps us Our virtual congregation and our in-person congregation are in different places. Even the in-person congregation is spread out, right? Literally kept apart by this disease which all the world fears. But the irony of this day is that that distance means nothing. Nothing at all. Because the love of the Father, the cross of Jesus Christ, and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit bring us together. In Christ, we are closer than our physical proximity shows. In Christ, we are one not only with each other across time and space, but we are one with all those Christians who have gone before and all those who will come after. In Christ, we and all the faithful departed and all the saints in light are all one body, one church, militant and triumphant. In the mysteries of the sacraments, we touch one another. Call to mind now your beloved departed those who have gone on to the nearer presence of God. In God, we hear our mother's songs again. We feel our father's strong hand and their mothers and fathers with them. In him, we stand with our children and our grandchildren and all future generations who will hope in Christ for their salvation. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we are now that body of innumerable saints which John sees in his vision of the end of days It's not the future of two days from now that matters. It's not the year 2021 that will change the world. On All Saints Day and All Souls Day, we proclaim that Christ crucified has already done that. Amen.
Please stand as we proclaim our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form one in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 383. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Daniel, our bishop, Justin, our archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority and for all who serve our country, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, for those who live them, and for all those who protect us, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widows and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who especially desire our prayers, especially Alex, Annette, Tanya, Dolores, Kitty, Derek, Robert, Gordon, Grant, Jerry, Rosemary, Sherry, Narnie, Debbie, the Kapischke family, and Colt. Are there others? Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Lorraine, and for those celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, especially Bob and Yasmin. Lord, have mercy. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Michael, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Almighty and everlasting God, we yield unto thee most high praise and hearty thanks for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all thy saints who have been the choice vessels of your grace and the lights of the world in their several generations. Most humbly beseeching you to give us grace so to follow the example of this, their steadfastness in thy faith and obedience to your holy commandments, that at the day of the general resurrection, we with all those who are of the mystical body of your Son may be set on his right hand, and hear that most joyful voice, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Grant this, O Father, for the sake of the same your Son, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Almighty God, with whom do live the spirits of those who depart hence in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful, after they are delivered from the burden of the flesh, are in joy and felicity. We give thee hearty thanks for the good examples of all those thy servants, who, having finished their course in faith, do now rest from their labors. And we beseech thee that we, with all those who are departed in the true faith of thy holy name, may have our perfect consummation and bliss, both in body and soul, in thy eternal and everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Uh, this is, of course, the Feast of All Saints, and we have All Souls Day tomorrow, so in honor of all the faithful departed, we celebrate on All Souls. Uh, we will be reading the names that you have sent in to the church office that we've printed up. We'll be reading the names of our faithful departed uh, during the Eucharist service. So as you come up and receive the Holy Eucharist, you'll be hearing the names be read. But also as you come up, keep them in your mind, the names that you've put on the list. Or if you didn't get to put a name on the list, keep your beloved departed in your mind as you come up to receive the Holy Sacrament. And those of you at home as you're watching, uh, keep them in mind as you pray along with us. Um, and we will pray a special blessing for them and for you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, from whose hand comes all that we need for life and godliness, we thank you for the generous gifts of your people, for the advance of your kingdom and the maintenance of your church. In them your people proclaim their trust in your providence. In them we make provision for the poor and needy among us. In them we see that same divine generosity by which you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to purchase our redemption. Through him we pray, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our great Thanksgiving is Eucharistic Prayer B on page 367, page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us. And together with them, receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Michael, and all the saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Florence A. Altrogi, Emmett C. Altrogi, Iris A. Soule, Anna W. Soule, Covert A. Soule, John Wilt, James Pusack, Lola Wilt, George Pusack, Marion Pusack, Bonnie Carnes, David Volzone, Pam Volzone, Libby Singleton, Dale Stevens, James Butterfield, Loris Butterfield, Ricky Bullock, Ronald Bullock, Bobby Bullock, Jack Bullock, Judy Bullock, Olin Ninshelzer, Marguerite Ninshelzer, Robert Thorpe, William Finch, Elmer Laverne Hewitt, Tom Hamer, Dorothy Hamer, Lily Rowell, Lowell Rowell, Rick Heiser, Marthan Day, Robert Day, Charles Tockstein, Mary Tockstein, Roger Wallace, Larry Cahill, Keith Hatch, Keith Ellison, Betty Jean Bastian, Leo William Bastian, Doris Modica, Chuck Modica, Pat Tuggle, Helen Tuggle, Francis Payne, William Thomas Payne IV, Noreen Johnson, Claude Johnson, 
Ada Wells, T.W. Wells, Jim Loika, Justin Cunningham, Mike Morris, Tom and Patty Anmerman, Greg Cavaness, Thomas C. Hansen, Anna Hansen, Thelma Williams, Nicholas Wartonic, Sophia Wartonic, Geraldine Wartonic, Marianne Wartonic, George Boone, David Hornall, Marinda Hornall, David Skip Hornall, Angelo Ferfaro, Harriet Molman, John Molman, Jake Potts, Andrew, Steve Hosh, Jake Schellenberg, Joey Schellenberg, Dorothy Koss, Bill Koss, Judy Addington, Harry Gore Sr., Olivia S. Gore, Robert Lamprecht, Alice Morris, Specialist David Dusenberry, William P. Dusenberry, Carl M. Capralian, David Ludwig Sr., Raymond Gook Sr., Adrian Amos, John Mellon, Anthony Sprint, Joe Dublar, Jane Evans, George Evans, Mary Evans, Pat Schuler, Marilyn Oglesby, Terrence Lee Gage, Juanita Rosa Gage, William Linden Gage Sr., Alan Gage, Daniel Taylor, Shirley Taylor, Keith Durant, Elsie Arsenault, Kenneth Arsenault Sr., Karen Arsenault, Rose Collins, Lynette Klein, Daniel Durbin, Donald Libel, Betty West, Sharon Harrison, Moses Harrison, Dennis Harney, Louis Verus, Charles Moore, Imogene Moore, Doris Schaefer, Lindsay Moore, Alicia Turgeson, Gulid Turleson, Rupert Turgeson, Ralph Para, Elsie Para, Joe Para, Ampero Para, Richard Salinitri, Aurora Gonzalez, Christopher Pouch, Zygmunt Konisny, James Frey, Sue Bondhus, Charles McNitt Sr., Mary Jane McNitt, Father Gary Goldacker, Carlisle Goldacker, Florence Goldacker, Loretta Goldacker, Faye Goldacker, Stanley Barham, Yvonne Barham, Van Went, Barbara Went, Jane Went, Gaston Leesley, Fideline Leesley, Irma Shunsky, Sam Simpson. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. because it's all Saints Day, I invite you to turn to page 498. Page 498. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, Thank you that in your 
Apologies, thank you. Uh, special thanks to Frank for reading all those names. We appreciate very much the acknowledgement of our loved ones uh, before the Lord. Uh, coming up on Tuesday, of course, is election day. Uh, we, th we are a polling place for two precincts, and so what we're asking is that all normal church business not come into the church on Tuesday because there'll be a lot of people in and out, and for COVID reasons, if for nothing else, uh, we just need to sort of keep away from the church on Tuesday while they do their thing. On Wednesday, also, we're asking that normal church business not come into the church. We're closing the building on Wednesday so that things can sort of settle down, we can get it cleaned up, uh, and then there'll be more cleaning going on also on Thursday just to make sure that everything is completely clean and ready again for Sunday um, for worship then. Coming up on Wednesday is the first of our new Bible study sessions. Uh, we will be studying uh, the last things, so the day of the Lord, the Messiah, uh, the, the book of Revelation, the prophecies of Jesus about the end times, those kinds of things. It should be a wonderful time. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Uh, that'll be Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. on Zoom. If you would like a link to the Zoom meeting, uh, please do email our office. Any other announcements that need to be made? Received in the blessing of our Lord. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.